Once again, we're receiving downlink video from inside the surface tension driven convection experiment. There are several components to this chamber. Along the edge, we see the chamber walls. The The I team concurs. It's flat as can be. Other features in this facility are the submerged heater, which payload specialist Fred Leslie has recently moved from a point at which it was sticking out from the silicon fluid to a point where it is now actually submerged. He filled this container with the silicon oil. The silicon oil contains small particles, which you see in the air region are floating along the surface of the fluid. And Fred Leslie has just reported that he has obtained a flat surface and experimenters on the ground have confirmed that they agree that the surface is flat as is desired at this point in the test. We are currently receiving another video image from inside the surface tension driven convection experiment. This camera is an infrared imaging camera that allows the experiment team to look at the temperature variations that exist on the surface of the oil. Do we have any other lights now? Well, oh, the same indications I'm getting. The light keeps coming on about once every three seconds, stays on for about a second and goes out. Did the messages displayed change or do we have the same messages? Copy that. Left to right, top to bottom. Three three point six, four three point three, three four point three, four three point nine. Second row. Five point zero one. That's five point zero one. Zero zero eight. Three three point eight. Four four point two. Third row. One one point six. One two zero. Zero nine one nine. Nine or eight.
This is Mission Control Houston. This uh, view is of a television that was recorded previously on board uh, Columbia over the past uh, two days uh, that it's been in orbit uh, by the crew. They're playing that back now uh, to the ground, uh, dumping uh, this video down. This video showing uh, the cargo bay of Columbia and uh, the left-hand payload bay door, which uh, has been in that uh, halfway shut position uh, since uh, just a few hours after uh, Columbia set up shop on orbit. Uh, that halfway open position is designed to help uh, further protect Columbia from any possible impacts by orbital debris that it may encounter in its uh, fairly low altitude orbit of 145 nautical miles and also its extended time that will be spent in orbit of uh, 16 days. This is Space Lab Operations Huntsville. Payload Commander Kathy Thornton working the controls of the drop physics module for the first uh, attempt at uh, deploying an actual liquid drop in that facility here on the uh, during the mission. And as we can see, she has the drop suspended now, uh, still attached to the two injector needles. And this first attempt, as we heard a few minutes ago, will be using uh, a four cubic centimeter drop of liquid for uh, evaluation purposes. Yesterday, she was working a fair amount with the system, but uh, using uh, solid uh, test spheres or calibration spheres uh, rather than liquids. So uh, she's proceeding uh, slowly and uh, carefully here to see if, uh, and there it is suspended. And uh, Kent Rominger now uh, taking a few photos of uh, payload specialist Al Sacco, who continues to be working with his uh, hands inside the Space Lab glove box. Uh, he's in a fairly lengthy set of procedures to uh, initiate protein crystal growth samples, uh, initiate uh, uh, the uh, growth of protein samples, rather. Uh, using individualized uh, or customized uh, startup uh, procedures for the samples. And we can see uh, two of the payload general support computers there in the uh, lower left-hand corner of our current view. Uh, Thornton now making an entry on one of them. And uh, we also see that one of those uh, PGSE laptop computers shows the uh, Columbia's ground track. a TPR session in uh, about five minutes. This is Space Lab Operation Sunsville. Uh, and as uh, Kathy Thornton continues to work with the uh, drop physics module, uh, Kent Rominger, the uh, STS-73 pilot, now uh, is in the module to uh, take a few still photos to document the operations. Uh, that's uh, typically done uh, to uh, provide some additional uh, information about uh, experiment operations during the course of the mission. Rominger on duty uh, as uh, on the redshift, he serves as uh, uh, for the orbiter support functions that uh, are necessary to provide uh, the smooth platform that uh, Columbia has been providing so far during the mission.
obviously see the change of uh, parameters causing uh, uh, some rather wide uh, gyrations of the drop now, which uh, Thorne will be trying to bring back under control by uh, further modifying some of the some of the inputs. Uh, when we hear the uh, instructions about up Kathy up Obviously, uh, there's uh, rather large effects from some of these changes and uh, in understanding uh, what the result is going to be from particular changes. Uh, it's a certain amount of uh, learning process or trial and error. Uh, Thornton continuing to try to see if some adjustments to the uh, acoustic energy will uh, get the drop centered up again. and. Uh, and uh, reduce the uh, motion. And now she's actually looking inside the window of the test chamber rather than seeing the video. It, uh, since the drop is no longer visible on the video monitors. It just splatted on the, uh, for the window toward me. This was a drop of water. Uh, just uh, distilled water with uh, the only additive to it being some small plastic particles that are suspended in the water. In the uh, case of this particular operation, uh, the, the water has those particles in there for purposes of uh, watching to see how the water droplet is uh, rotating. And now we can see she opens the uh, access door to the experiment bay for the drop physics module. And then we'll be uh, accessing the actual test chamber. And uh, two previous drops. were uh, manipulated and uh, maintained in levitation for uh, quite some period of time. She has now, uh, after uh, maintaining levitation on this drop for some period of time, she's, uh, she is uh, testing the procedure to uh, contact the drop with the injector needles and uh, suck it back into the uh, containment system of the drop physics module. See uh, that. For Kathy, no need to reply, but DPM says bravo, very good job. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. We're having a lot of fun watching it. Thank you.
it is the flow along this top surface that scientists are interested in. There are what are referred to as thermocapillary flows that result from the surface tension driven the surface tension variation along the surface of this liquid and the motion of these flows can be manipulated so that it become it goes from a two-dimensional flow to a three-dimensional flow. This is accomplished by heating the surface with either a uh, laser flux or a by heating the internal center of this fluid by a submerged heater. This in turn causes temperature variations across the surface of the oil and changes the direction of the flows, changing from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional mode. It is this transition from two-dimensional to three-dimensional flow that the scientists are most interested in investigating.